everybody this is Nor Speaks Out I'm Nor of course and welcome we're here for ancient African history and diaspora stories so remember to like share and subscribe right now video and like I promised um, talk a little bit more about my master's dissertation um, that I wrote in 2019 um, and so I was looking at traditional Ugandan medicine and really looking at how traditional Ugandan medicine was impacted um, by the introduction of modern medicine by the British Empire. Some of you may already know I wanted to be a doctor so so bad since I was I don't even know how high um, but Jesus said no so we had to find a new dream that's okay um, and so always interested I've just always really been interested in medicine um, worked in the NHS for about seven years after I finished my psychology degree I was a nursing assistant for two years and then I went on into like quite a few different administrative roles um, and so worked in quite a few different departments mostly in cancer services um, as like a personal assistant kind of it's got a funny name but we don't need to worry about that but assistant to quite a few consultants and nurses um, and so while I was doing the masters thinking about what I wanted to do for my research project my supervisor Dr Toby Green was like well actually Noreen you've worked in the NHS for such a long time are you not interested in medical history or Ugandan medical history and I was kind of like mm, me. <laughs> and at first it it didn't really appeal to me. I'm not entirely sure why. And then I went home, had a chat with my mum. Younger always told me about how, like when she was young and when they had malaria, they would go to grandma. Grandma would get some herbs, get some roots. She'd boil them up and they'd drink it. Malaria, done. Same with measles um, and all sorts of other things. She was just, again, somebody who was uneducated um, or it, not educated in a formal way um, but was well known in the community for um, the traditional information that she had in terms of health and healing um, so yeah I was thinking okay this might be something I could work on and what I could do so I was like okay let's try let's make this happen and I was in the library in tears like for the deadline I was like, why? <laughs> why? but we thank god we made it through so Uganda was officially a protectorate of the British Empire in, 19, in 1894. Um, so what I did was compare the pre-colonial to the colonial and then post-colonial era. I used mostly um, British missionaries, um, British missionary works um, and their diaries, their medical notes as my sources of information for the pre-colonial. Um, so some of the names I used were Robert William Falcon, as I said before, Charles Willis, um, John Speck. Um, so their works um, and some of their research articles and their diary notes were my sources of information that I used to consider what was going on in the pre-colonial time. And then I also looked at some of the work of Albert Cook, um, who worked at Mengo Malago Hospital during the colonial era. And then I interviewed um, five traditional medical doctors yes. understanding traditional doctors and local people had in terms of the causes of disease we had six causes so it was either God had made you unwell it was either magic or a curse from another person or an ancestor um, who had passed who was unhappy with your behavior um, and then we also had this understanding that disease was if it wasn't caused by those three, then it would have been by the climate, by um, as a result of poor health or nutrition, and then also that disease was infectious and so it was passed on from person to person. So we just had more um, options in terms of the causes or who we attributed disease to. Um, and that was the understanding. So you had six causes of disease and then this changed um, with the introduction of modern medicine under the British and psychology um, and mental health um, has replaced um, this attribution for the cause of disease as magic and so most people um, so most of all of the traditional doctors I interviewed um, for the most part agreed um, nobody made any mention of any sort of idea that magic was involved in terms of people being unwell and so magic was gone and 
in came psychology and so that was the main impact really um, that the introduction of modern medicine had on the understanding Ugandans traditional traditional doctors in Uganda had in terms of what caused disease. The last two areas that I looked at, um, so for the diagnosis of disease and then also for treatment, this is where the impact was extremely heavy. With the introduction of modern medicine came hospital buildings and hospital equipment and laboratories and so that key side of diagnosis again has was was taken under um, in these institutions and these buildings and with this new technology that was introduced and was massively impacted um, by the British Empire and the introduction of modern medicine and where the treatment of disease was down to local community traditional doctors or healers um, who were either men or women it wasn't um, at that during the pre-colonial era it wasn't necessarily the case that mostly men were doctors it was a fairly good mix um, but at, um, and then also you had the role of the, the the woman in the home the wife the mother who also played a key role as a, a healer or a doctor for their family um, and for her family members so this was really key then also you the really sophisticated um, medical practices that were seen um, I'll put up a picture so you can have a look so Robert William Falcon came to Uganda in 1857 and he recorded um, and took true pictures and images even brought back the knife um, that was used by this doctor um, who was from the western part of Uganda, part of the Banyoro people, witnessed a successful c-section, meaning that the mother and the child um, were well and healthy and survived the procedure following. So he visited the family eight days after the procedure was done um, and then brought back the knife which is in the UK, is in the Wellcome Library in central London. Um, and so the, these practices are not um, taking place anymore. They've been taken up um, into hospitals and into our the, the newer modern medical institutions um, that the British brought. The wife in the home, the woman of the home, was very much a, maybe a, we could call her a general practitioner um, or a, a medical professional in her own home. And so, for the most part, if you if a member of the family was unwell, it was the wife's responsibility or the mother's responsibility to assess um, uh, this this person's sickness or ill health um, and to treat it. So mothers would look at whether it was their husband or their children um, and see what was wrong and attempt to treat um, their me the member of that their family member. However, this drastically changed. And so like um, Sagan Musisi, who at Makarere University in Uganda and Kampala, um, I would agree and say that the key impact um, the introduction of modern medicine had in Uganda was this change um, of this really instrumental role mothers and wives had in their home um, as almost a traditional doctor really locally and so wives would do a significant amount but there were some things that they were unable to do whatever they were not they would then call a traditional doctor or traditional healer from the community that they were aware of um, and they would come in and help with more serious cases of disease but for very minor um, issues wives would take care of that at home and so things like cupping um, bleeding the wounds blistering the wounds these were things um, getting herbs and roots um, and using those to treat or um, pack a wound for example all of those things were actually done by mothers at home um, and so now we see in in Uganda today that's something that um, really isn't taking place anymore. Um, despite those findings, I I titled my dissertation "A History of Traditional Ugandan Medicine and Healthcare and Its Resilience um, in Spite of Colonial Legacies." Um, and the reason I would still argue it's resilient um, and traditional medicine is still enduring. Um, is because it's simply because of the fact that 
many people today in Uganda prefer traditional medicine, prefer natural medicine. And so of what I found with the traditional doctors I interviewed, many of their patients prefer to see them first um, and prefer a natural option first. And if um, the treatment offers is sufficient, then they would go to the hospital or um, most of the doctors I interviewed said the same thing. They might get blood results. A patient would see a, a doctor in hospital, get either blood results, maybe have a scan, maybe have a confirmed diagnosis even, but they would prefer not to have surgery. They would prefer not to have um, modern medicine as the treatment. And so they would take the diagnosis that they got from their local hospital or the general hospital and take it to the traditional doctor and say, okay, well, this was what the scientific doctor has said. Um, what medicine can you give me? Because people prefer um, traditional medicine. And so, and that collaboration with traditional Ugandan medicine plus modern for me um, really speaks to the, like, the efficacy of traditional Ugandan medicine, how it works, um, how good and useful it is, how knowledgeable traditional doctors are um, and how they were before and how they still are and how many people even are moving kind of like they are here. People are, you know, looking for Chinese trad traditional medicines here um, in the West. Many people prefer to have a natural means of um, medical intervention if they have to have an intervention. And so for me, that, that speaks volumes and, and says that actually this, as much as, even though so many things have changed, um, th this, continu this legacy is still there, the desire for people to have medicine that is local, that is home, um, medicine that has been, was done for many years, um, that our grandparents and our great grandparents did and that we know works um, is still being done and so I was pretty amazed to find that. I'm done. Once again guys, like, share and subscribe and comment. Add some more bits. If you're Ugandan and you know about some traditional medicine, um, please put some comments in there. Let me know what people in your towns are doing, in your cities. Um, it would be really interesting to hear if you're from other places as well. And um, please do comment, like, share and subscribe. I'm Noor, this is Noor Speaks Out and I have spoken. And so I'm asking you wahura, which means are you listening? Bye guys.